Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Force StarCraft II Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg strategy. Now in this replay, our Zerg player here is Inertio, and our Terran opponent is Empire Cause. So again, this is a Zerg strategy. What we're going to be looking at specifically is going for a pretty typical Speedling and Mutalist build, but also incorporating Roaches. Now the purpose in doing so is that, we, you know, you do see as a Zerg player, you see a lot of Hellion Harass from Terran opponents. Um, there is also that possibility of Reaper harassment, with Ro which Roaches would deal with, of course. But Reapers have become uh, much less prevalent since the last patch, changing that speed upgrade, making it so that you need a factory in order to get it. So because of that, you don't see Reapers nearly as often, um, but you are still seeing a lot of Hellion harassment. Now whether that Hellion harassment comes in the form of them just trying to run up to your base and pick off workers, or um, even the possibility of dropships dropping Hellions into the back of your mineral line uh, trying to pick off your drones, that's also a possibility as well. So these are both things you need to look for, um, these are both possibilities you need to prepare for. Another popular open as Terran against Zerg is also to go for quick banshees. Um, so we're going to show you in this video how to determine if you're getting one or the other. Um, at least reasonably, how to be reasonably sure that you're going to be getting one or the other based on scouting information. As always, with everything, scouting super important in this game. Um, could possibly even change the name of StarCraft II ScoutCraft because it literally is that important. <clears throat> Besides maintaining your economy, scouting is the, the most important thing that you can do in this game. So yeah, you got to learn how to scout, you got to learn what to see and what to look for, and we're going to help you do that. So starting off here, the build order that we're looking at, 15 spawning pool and 15 extractor and yes I know that when I said you should change the name to Scoutcraft that was super cheesy but whatever I'll say what I want it's my channel uh, so we're looking at a 15 spawning pool 15 extractor following that up right away with a 16 queen as soon as why am I even why am I even on the hatchery we need a spawning pool for the queen first I'm a little off today I've been doing a lot of work trying to work on our website actually uh, forcestrategygaming.com it's very very rudimentary right now but it's in its workings um, and we're going to be trying to get it up within the next month or so. It is public. Probably not the best idea to leave like a half finished or not even a half, like a 10th or 20th finished page uh, public. But I just wanted to show you guys that it is coming. So anyways, back to the strategy here. We do have that queen coming at 16 supply. So as I mentioned, you know, we're going to be scouting. We're going to try to figure out what our opponent's doing and basing our decisions from that point on that. Again, scouting super important. Uh, we are getting this quick expansion. Fast expanding just generally feels right as Zerg. Uh, purpose being that you obviously need those extra larvae in order to uh, produce enough units. So, you know, an option you're going to see players do if they don't feel comfortable fast expanding, you also sometimes see players put a second hatchery in their base. And in fact, for those of you who didn't play StarCraft 1, um, having multiple hatcheries in your main base was how Zerg played. Before the introduction of Queens, you always played with multiple hatcheries in your base. So let's go to our opponent's base here and look at the scouting information. Now we saw when we moved up, there was a barracks and a factory there. That's pretty standard. You don't really see a heavy barracks build. You usually see a factory coming down. The important thing that we're going to be looking for is these add-ons. The add-ons are really what's going to tell us what's happening. Now, since there's no reactor coming down, on this barracks or on this factory. We're not going to expect mass Hellions, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't expect Hellions. We did see that tech lab going down. The other thing we also have to worry about is does that tech lab mean he's going to switch the starport over and try to get um, try to get some banshees out because that's the other thing to worry about so we have to see what happens with the starport and now the next thing you might be saying is well what if he doesn't build all the buildings right next to the edge isn't this Terran player an idiot for doing that well you have to realize that the reason he's doing this is to prevent against a baneling bust um, he's doubly reinforcing his wall to prevent against any sort of baneling bust so this is something you'll see a lot of players do actually and if you can't happen to get vision of all the buildings with the zergling that you're trying to send into scout what you're going to want to do is sacrifice an overlord um, not always but it's it's a good idea if you really want to be sure of what's going on with your opponent if you can get something in there if you can't get a zergling in then maybe doing an overlord is your best bet so moving in there this is what we saw um still just this tech lab we haven't seen a swamp yet so this means hmm maybe he's not going for banshees because we're going to see that swamp if he's going for banshees so what we want to see is if anything's building out of the starport and if something's building out of the starport there we go so seeing that lowered right there that means something is building it's not a banshee because there's no tech lab that means we're either going to be seeing vikings or medevacs medevacs being an option we did see with this with these little sparks coming out here we do know something's coming out of here um so Medivacs being an option for either a Thor drop 
drop. Remember, we've got this tech lab for either a Thor drop or a Hellion drop with that upgrade. Again, that tech lab allowing Hellions to get that upgrade. Back at the base here, let's pay attention to what has been going on. Um, so at 19 is when we got this expansion, that hatchery went down. 22 supply, we went for that metabolic boost, you were able to see that because the production tab was up. Speedling's a necessity in pretty much every game, there's no reason not to get that speed upgrade, almost ever. 23 supply, we were getting our second queen because of course we did have this expansion come up. Uh, and then at 30 supplies, when we went ahead and dropped that roach warren. Now, we're getting that roach warren to deal with the possibility, again, secondary scouting there, seeing what's going on, still no tech lab there. To, to deal with the possibility of hellions or reapers, or even possibly thors, because if used right, roaches are also good against their Thors. So here's that drop here. Again, we knew that either a Viking or a Medivac was coming, and it was in fact a Medivac, so we are seeing a drop. We're going to want to use those Roaches to try to take out these Hellions to the best of our ability. Um, and you could saw the you could see there that bringing in the Roaches from multiple angles uh, forced the Hellions to move away, and so we were able to get somewhat of a surround on them. Uh, something to realize too, when you're facing this scenario and you have to pull your drones away, you kind of it's best to really split them into two groups and to make sure they're not all clumped into one big pile. Because when they're clumped into one big pile, it's very easy for the Hellions to just wipe them all out. So if you're going to be separating your workers when you're seeing harassment like that, grab them in two piles, send them away. Uh, you're going to be much better off if you do that. Upgrading here to a layer, we started doing that at 46 supply. Um, essentially, you just want to do that whenever it's, it's ready, whenever it's available. So, you know, we started off, we used the initial Vespine to get this speedling upgrade. Then after that, we used some of our Vespine gas to get these early roaches as early defense. And then as soon as that layer is up, is that that's when you want to get the Spire. And that ended up happening at 60 supply. That was actually just after this Hellion harassment. So getting the scouting, seeing what we did, um, we were reasonably sure that we we're going to be seeing some sort of a drop, either th Thors or Hellions. Um, and again, roaches can do pretty well against both. Also, those speedlings are going to be much of, of much assistance against any possible Thor drop. So, you know, the most important thing in this game is to scout, find out what your opponent's doing, and then figure out what you want to do from that point forward. Now that the Spire's up, we're going to be able to get some Mutalus out. You can see we have eight in production right here. Also getting a Banelings Nest. Now the purpose behind doing this, once our opponent sees that Mutalists are coming, he's got two probable responses. Those two responses are either Thors or Marines. If he goes for Marines, those Banelings are going to do quite nice for you. Um, Banelings absolutely mop up any group of Marines, basically. Um, the only thing you have to really worry about is them using Stimpak and kiting away, but um, either way, Banelings are strong against those light units such as the Marines. So as you can see here, these Mutalists are finally up. We're going to be moving out, trying to do as much harassment as possible. Important things to always be doing as Zerg, spreading those creep. Um, also going to be coming out with another expansion here. No reason not to. He hasn't really harassed us since that initial Hellion harass. Trying to move in now with a Thor drop. Clearly a bit too late. Uh, moving into his base, you can see at the front of his base here, uh, of his natural expansion, he doesn't really have a whole lot. We're easily able to pick off those siege tanks, and that's something you want to do. If you see something that could be as damaging as a siege tank set up, um, before you send in your Zerglings, you want to pick something like that off. And then, you know, use, use your Zerglings and Roaches, send them in after that point to mop up anything else. At this point, we just want to kind of hurt his economy, pick off any buildings that we possibly can. Trying to avoid this Thor while grouped up, you do want to spread out your Mutalists, again, known as the Magic Box. Basically, just move them so that they're spread out and then engage once they're not clumped up. That's basically what you're trying to do. Pretty simple stuff there. Um, amassing our forces right outside of our, his base, we're going to be pushing in all at the same time getting our upgrades. Um, important to be able to macro while you're engaging your opponent. Being able to do multiple things at once, very, very important in this game. So moving in there with that magic boss box, spreading out those Mutalists, um, and then at that point, we can easily engage the Thor without having to worry about any splash damage. Also at this point, of course, we do have these Roaches and these Speedlings uh, in to join the fight, which makes it much, much easier to take those guys out. And it looks like the Terran player does, in fact, call a good game. So we took a look at a lot of things here. I think the most important notes that I want to go over, really, was that scouting information, knowing what to look for uh, and knowing what to expect, and then how to properly deal with it. So let's just go over that build order one more time here. We saw that 15 spawning pool, followed it up with a 15 extractor. 16 supplies when that first queen came out. Now at 19 supply, we did go for a pretty quick expansion here, dropping this hatchery over at our natural. 22 supply started researching that metabolic boost. Uh, 23 supply, 
came out with that second queen, um, and then we were able to transfer that right over to our natural as soon as that was up. At 30 supplies, when we went saw that roach warren drop, and remember, at this time, we were scouting the front of this base. We were looking to see, are there going to be banshees coming? Is there going to be a drop coming? What is the possibility? And something else to note, if you saw the likelihood of banshees coming, like if you saw a starport with a tech lab on it and it was pumping out units, then what you're going to want to do is get another queen or two, because queens will do very well early game against banshees. And then at that point, also, of course, we want to upgrade to that layer so that we can get overseers to do any cloak detection that's going to be necessary. So we did our scouting. We saw that some sort of a drop, either Thor or Hellions, was likely to be coming. Uh, now in seeing that, again, we came out with that Roach Warren at 30 supply, got a few Roaches out. 46 supply is when we came out with this layer here, and then at 60 supply, we saw that Spire. So yeah, guys, once again, this has been 4 StarCraft 2 strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, then please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning, guys. Stay to one base, push out early with some roaches, it can be very, very effective. Now something to note, you start out with roaches, his likely response is going to be to get some stalkers. You have to expect that. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to, going to be starting off this attack with roaches and switching into speedlings. Speedlings are very, very strong against stalkers.